Ladies and gentlemen, this is my story on how I survived 100 days in the new version of ARK, ARK Survival Ascended, and here's what happened. Waking up on the beach of the new and upgraded Ark Ascended felt surreal, considering the countless hours spent on the previous Ark version. This is gonna be amazing. Just look at this. After taking a deep breath in this fresh world, it was time to get down to business. I needed to gather essential items for basic tools and weapons required to survive in this somewhat strange yet oddly familiar land. Crafting this amazing stone pick allowed me to increase the resource collection efforts, leading to the creation of a hatchet and a spear to protect myself. Venturing out to grab a quick bite, I found myself craving juicy fried chicken. Stranded on an island with no clothes but armed with a spear, I seized the opportunity to make Dodo shish kebab. Yeah, at the time, I felt the need for a companion on my adventures, or probably just someone or something I could talk to when loneliness struck. So, I decided to try my luck at taming a nearby Muschops. Fortunately, I had exactly what it needed, managed to tame it and named it Max. Moving forward, I focused on securing some cloth armor for myself and worked on a little shack for both Max and I to spend the night. Thankfully, with the help of Max, I was able to gather a boatload of resources. In no time at all, I set up a little thatch shack for us to chill and cuddle together. Not forgetting a small fireplace to cook those dodo shish kebabs we had gathered earlier. Day 2 started with a little surprise just outside my base. I heard the ominous sound of a raptor. I had no idea how to tackle this problem, but I knew I had to leave my shack and craft some boulders to try and trap those little buggers. Gotta do this for us. Here. Oh, please don't find me. Oh, please don't find me. I ventured out to confront the raptor that had taunted me earlier. Everything seemed eerily normal until... Oh, there it is. There it is. Oh frick. Out of nowhere, the raptor leapt out and started chasing me. I readied my bowler and took a quick shot, but it dodged my first attempt. Luckily, I kept my composure and succeeded with the second bowler, immobilizing the raptor. I then finished the job with my spears. Yeah, come on. T camps, come on. Come on. If it gets out, I yell. <laughs> Jeez. After that close encounter, I equipped myself with a bow and some arrows, and headed out to farm dinos for their hide. Oh yeah, I also found a buddy for Max, a Mastjobs that I tamed and named Matty. Anyways, back to my previous task, with the resources I was collecting, I planned to build a raft, thinking it was the best way to stay out of harm's way and possibly explore new areas safely. On day 3, I continued working on building a small base on the raft, this time using wooden structures for the build. There was also something new I hadn't seen before on Ark, baby dinos, apparently you could tame them if their parents no longer existed, which was a bit of a shame. Fortunately, this strike was alone, and it was quite a high level as well. All I had to do was imprint on the dino and feed it some berries as it matured. It was that simple, and yeah, I named this one Tyson. Then, it was back to playing around with my raft build, collecting the items I required, and also wanted to see if the old extension trick would work here on this version. Sadly, it didn't quite do the trick. However, all was not lost. I pressed on, using the tools and structures I had to produce this magnificent thing of beauty. Yeah, not quite the finished raft that I had hoped for. I had to cut the raft build short because, um, I started hearing weird noises again. And then, this beast popped out from the trees. I don't know what it was, but I knew not to mess with it. By day 4, the trike had fully matured, meaning I now had a strong mount early on in my playthrough. If I could only acquire its saddle, though. To do that, I needed to collect more hide, so I seized every opportunity that I had to gather the hide I required. While on my journey to collect hide, I came across a green drop containing some awesome loot, high tier hide armor and an upgrade for my bow. 
There was also a tempting beaver dam in my path, and I just couldn't resist taking a peek at its contents. I grabbed all the valuable items I could carry and made a break for it. You definitely don't want to stick around when there are angry beavers nearby. Surprisingly, this darn beaver followed me all along the shore and somehow found me miles from its little dam. Unfortunately for the beaver, I had just picked up a sweet bow, which made quick work of getting rid of it. Hey. <laughs> With that sad end to the creature's story, I had a few more resources to collect to craft the trike's saddle. Then I focused on completing the raft base build. Finally, I managed to complete my raft base build and it turned out rather snazzy. I had a little dino pin for my dinos and an area for all my basic necessities. I just needed to acquire the crafting stations for that part of the raft. Of course, I had to go out in search of the items required to build these crafting stations. I had to farm up some height once more, grabbed some wood and some stones, and then cooked up the refining forge. Once that was done, I needed to farm up the easiest source of metal I could find, which meant taking down some of those river rocks, those smooth looking rocks on the shore. You don't get a lot of metal, but it's enough to get the job done. Later, after refining the raw metal I gathered into metal ingots, I went ahead and crafted myself a smithy, crafted some metal tools with the excess metal and well ended the day by collecting more raw metal from the river rocks that I could find. There was also a blue drop that I spotted at night. I thought it would have something cool in it. Turns out it didn't. It gave me a freaking toilet out of all things. Just great. Alrighty, equipped with a set of metal tools and weapons, I set off to tame a flyer, one that would help me reach those hard to reach places. Just over on one of the previously visited islands, I spotted a pteranodon. I swiftly made my way to it and tried to trap it with one of my bowlers. After immobilizing the pteranodon, I swapped the bowlers for my crossbow and tranked the bugger until it was knocked out. Thing is, I needed to find some prime meat to tame this buddy of mine, so I ventured out in search of some prime suspects. I decided to go after a Bronto that was in the vicinity. Together with Tyson, I fought toe-to-toe -to -toe with this mighty beast and it was by no means a walk in the park. To be honest, Tyson was struggling to do any sort of damage to the Bronto because of its darn knockback. That's when I decided to give the crossbow a go and it was doing really well too. I managed to take down the mighty Bronto and grabbed a whole lot of prime meat and some of the other goodies. While I had the Pteranodon take Taming in the background with the prime meat that I had gotten for it, I thought I'd go ahead and tame a Styracosaurus that happened to be in the area. After what felt like hours surfing on the Styracosaurus, trying to tame it, I eventually got the tame. However, as I was going back to collect my previous tame, the Pteranodon, and head back to the raft base, I was met with a shocking sight. The Pteranodon was missing, nowhere to be seen, but I did spot its bag. It seemed like some pesky freaking dino just destroyed the terror I had tamed. Day 7 started off with me going after a green supply drop that spawned nearby, and you won't believe what this freaking beauty had in it. This was the resource that I needed, and the reason why I wanted to tame a fly in the first place. Yup peeps, this supply drop had freaking crystals in it and a whole bunch of it too. By the way, I just had to go and check out the beaver dam that was right next to me. I mean, I kinda took care of those beavers the other day, so I guessed that it wasn't going to be that much of a challenge to get what was inside. And man, did it look pretty juicy inside that beaver dam. So now, with my new and improved super spyglass, I decided to head off to one of the safest islands on the map, Herbivore Island. It was a slow but fruitful journey to the land flowing with milk and honey and plant-eating bunnies. Before thinking about building a base here on Herbivore Island, I decided to erect a fence to keep my dinos at bay and also get some of my dinos working without any hiccups. Yeah, I meant those Mars chops. Putting them on Wanda would do wonders for me and the rest of my crew. I began by clearing out an area for where I wanted to build my fence, gathered the resources required and from there I began laying out the foundations for my fence build. Then I played around with a few different designs to see what what would look cool and sort of fits the look that I was going after, which at the time I had no freaking idea. 
zip long. After completing my awesome new fence build, it was back to trying to tame a flyer. I had spotted a couple of decently leveled pteranodons in the area, and I thought I'd give it a go and tame some. One in particular was quite a good level, although this one seemed like it didn't want to land. So I waited and waited some more, but it just didn't want to land. So instead of wasting my time waiting for the pteranodon to land, I went on to tame an Anki that I had spotted. It was pretty slow, so I just began tranking it where it stood and knocked it out. I scrambled back to base to get it some berries for it to tame up. I then gave up on trying to wait for the pteranodon to land and instead went out looking for others on the opposite island. There I managed to find another decently leveled pteranodon and without wasting any more time I whipped out my bowler to trap the terror and knocked it out instantly with my crossbow. Not being able to find any prime meat on the island I was on, I traveled back to Herb Island where I spotted a few baby dinos that would give me exactly what I required. Later on, while I waited for my dinos to tame up, I spotted a female pteranodon that happened to land next to me. Seeing as I needed a mate for my other terror, I went ahead and tamed this one as well. Well, on day 10, back at base, I began breeding my pteranodons for spares and tried to get the stats from my higher leveled pteranodon passed down to a breeding pair. While that was going on in the background, I decided to hunt down a few dinos for their hide, collect some raw metal to craft a saddle for my Anki and rent out for a proper metal run. By day 11, I was ready to start hatching my pteranodon eggs, and for that, I had to get a couple of standing torches going. These would allow me to maintain the optimum temperature for the eggs to hatch. However, it seems like we were in the midst of a heatwave or something, as it was extremely hot and the eggs didn't even need a fire source to cook. Also, I didn't realize that I was overheating and losing health fast. I don't remember it being this bad the last time I played on the island. All I knew, I just had to find a way to cool down or I was going to be cheese kebabs myself so I tried chilling in the shade on my raft thinking that if I could stay there without my clothes on I'd be okay but nope that didn't work another idea popped into my head was to chill in the lagoon on herbivore island and what do you know this one actually worked thankfully as I was starting to freak out since I had no idea what was going on Later that day, I was finally able to get on my merry way and started hatching those pteranodon eggs. I continued breeding my pteranodons on day 12, aiming to pass down the higher level stats to a breeding pair, allowing me to start breeding a pteranodon for personal use along with a few backups. Once I had a birdie that was ready for me, I decided to take it out for a little spin and at the same time try to get it a few additional levels. That was the plan. Unfortunately, these pteranodons weren't as good as I'd hoped. It was barely doing any damage to the other dinos, so it was quite impossible to get it the levels that I'd hoped for. Well, I suppose this yellow drop would make up for the fact that my pteranodons were useless. Yeah. Oh yeah, day 13. I had a pretty insane idea. You see, while I was trying to level my pteranodon previously, I spotted an alpha raptor and I knew that this would give me some juicy levels. So I decided to upgrade a part of my raft to stone tier in order to trap the alpha raptor and take it down. Done with the upgrade to my raft, I set off to where I had spotted the alpha raptor. Where is it? Oh, look at that. Look at that. Oh, snap. Let's go. That's a bit scary. Oh, snap. Oh, snap. Hey, there we go. Get it through here. Can I sneak a headshot, maybe? Yes. Let's go, son. You're going to get knocked out right here. Oh, what did you? Oh, that's my uh, freaking uh, fire, fire. I'm scared to get any closer. Wait, let's go and land with my sir. Uh... Oh, the freak! How'd you get out? Come on, buddy. There we go. Couple of hits there. Oh no! Look at that. Almost destroyed! Freak! Oh snap, I think it is. Here it comes. 
Here it comes. Yes! I'ma just park my uh Patera right here. See how you escaped the last time, punk. Get that headshot, shall we? This thing is freaking huge. Let's go. Let's go. Oh, you freaking get out again. It's a pain in my butt. Come here, buddy. It's so bloody. Oi! Let's go, son. Jeez. That was... Heck, yo, bro. Look at this loot! Oh my goodness! Considering I was in the area with a part of my raft still functional as a trap and a carno nearby, I decided to try and tame it. I lured it into my little trapper raft, got it trapped, and then proceeded to trank and knock it out. With all the juicy prime meat that I managed to get from the Alpha Raptor, I was able to feed the carno and waited for it to tame up. For days 14 to 15, well, I decided it was about time to work on a little base for myself here on Herbivore Island, just something more stable to return to while out on my journeys across this land. Thankfully, with the help of my Styracosaurus, I was able to gather a ton of stone with its special stamp attack. As for the other resources, I had some seriously powerful tools to help me out with that. It was all about trying to build a decent sized base that looks pleasing to the eyes. Yeah, good luck with that camps! Because to be honest, I had no idea what to do, but I did it anyways. I guess these new arc centered structures were worked on for quite some time because, man, let me tell you something, this tiny little base that I sort of whipped up turned out to be surprisingly really awesome looking. I mean, everything about it looked amazing and all the structures just fitted together so beautifully. I was truly impressed. The day began with me pursuing yet another yellow supply drop and boy, what I found was truly insane. A couple of juicy ascended saddles and a few neat bits and bobs. My goal for the day was to complete the upgrade of my raft to stone tier. I wanted to get this done as I had a very long journey ahead and having a stone raft would be a good thing. I must add that I was finally able to craft myself a full set of flak gear. Once everything was good to go, I set off with Mr. Stubbles and Peter towards the snow biome. Yeah, this was going to be a really long trip, but it had to be done because I needed some special items that were mostly found in the snow biome. Later that day, I managed to sail to the border of the snow biome. However, it was quite late and the weather turned out to be pretty bad. If I had pressed on towards the snow, I probably wouldn't have made it through the night. So, I did the sensible thing. I went to grab some grub with big old Mr. Stubbles and opted to camp in my raft at the border of the snow biome for the night. Oh man, this was one hectic day. While I was on my merry way through the snow biome, a freaking Legixthius sort of stumbled into my path. And it was not a happy camper seeing me cruising along its highway. This thing didn't want me in the area. I tried my best to shake it off, doing everything I could think of to outrun this beast. For a sliver of a moment, I actually thought all was well. Until... Well... This darn freaking beast wrecked my raft and everything in it. At this point, I was done for and sort of felt like quitting the game. But I pressed on and thought quickly on my feet. I figured that I just had to try and save as much of the loot that I had as possible and try to stay alive. That's when I came up with this brilliant plan. I gathered as many resources as I needed from nearby trees and bushes built a couple of that structures to reach my loot, a few storage boxes to store my loot until I could figure out what to do with them, and built a little thatch shack with a fireplace to keep me warm for the night. Well, I was out and about with my pteranodon, searching for some penguins, as I needed them for the polymer to craft cryopods that would take care of the dino transportation problem. Luckily, I did manage to get a few of those penguins. 
Here's the cool thing. While I was on my way back to the makeshift base, I freaking spotted an Argentavis, one that seemed like it was stuck on something. It was just so unbelievable. And of course, I just had to try and tame the Argentavis. It wasn't too difficult either, as the Argy was stuck, and I had some really good taming gear. Eventually, I did knock it out, and it was in a safe spot as well. I just needed to somehow get some prime meat. The thing is, I took out baby penguins earlier, and I couldn't to harvest their bodies for some weird reason. I thought I'd go back to the spot and give it another go. Surprisingly, I was freaking able to get the prime meat that I needed. When I finally tamed the Yaji, I flew back to my makeshift base with the Yaji on follow, crafted a few cryopods to store the Pteranodon and Kano, then stuffed whatever I could carry that was important into the Yaji that I had just tamed. From there, I made the long journey back to Herbivore Island. So, I made it back to Herbivore Island in one piece. However, while I was going about my business around the base, the game crashed. Nothing new with this early version. The game had crashed multiple times throughout the play through, but this time it deactivated the mods I had running. This meant that I lost my Steracosaurus and to top it off, the cryos weren't releasing my dinos. Well, on the plus side of things, I was at base with most of my loot and a new RG. It was time to kit out my base with the crafting stations that I needed, since I didn't have a raft anymore. I set up some storage boxes for the loot, placed down the mortar and pistol, and cooked up some spark powder. With that, I was able to craft a smithy and then finished off the day with a couple of refining forges for smelting metal. Oh yes, not forgetting a preserving bin to keep my foods sweet and juicy. Well, mainly to preserve the perishables a bit longer. It was an early start to day 20, as I had another long trip, but this time I planned on going to Forest Peak. The thing is, I had a cool little large Tavos, and losing it would be devastating. I had to try and find a mate for it, so that I could start breeding a few backups. Once I arrived at Forest Peak, I began searching the area for a suitable mate. Not long after, I managed to spot a level 100 male RG. However, it was not alone, and the area looked quite dangerous. So, I went in with my Argentavis and tried to clear out the area of all unwanted dinos. After clearing out the area and kiting the RG towards me, I began the taming process by tranking the RG with my OP crossbow. Luckily, I had some fancy footwork that simply mesmerized the huge turkey, and within a couple of tranks, I was able to knock it out cold. And with the dinos that I fought earlier, I was able to farm up some prime meat, which I used to feed the big birdie and waited for it to tame up. Well, I guess you guys should have guessed by now. Right, yep, for the next two days, I focused on breeding my Argies. This was quite a tedious task, as I had to try to get a breeding pair with the best of the stats of Argies that I had, before attempting to breed one to use and for a few backups. Plus, I had to deal with a whole lot of crashes. It was quite frustrating, but I pressed on. Oh yeah, I also decided to go for a metal run to try and fill up the forges back at base. Alrighty, I decided to give another cryopod mod a chance, considering the early access version of Ark Ascended was missing its cryopods. Of course, I had to journey to the snow biome once again, but this time I had a trusty Argy with me, so no more encounters with those darn Jixthias. However, getting organic polymer proved to be quite a challenge. So, on to plan B. I farmed as much obsidian as I could, all the while gathering some oil and crystal that were in the area. On my way back to Herb Island, I stumbled upon an interesting yellow supply drop. Naturally, being the curious chap I am, I couldn't resist having a little look-see. And oh boy, did I get some amazing spoils. Day 24. Safely back at base, I started working on setting up a fabricator with the resources I collected the previous day. Once the fabricator was up and running, I used the obsidian from the snow biome to cook up some normal polymer. With the polymer ready, I crafted a couple of new cryopods, hoping that this would do the job. 
Later that day, I decided to venture out in search of a Baryonyx. Firstly, as I had just acquired an Ascended Saddle for it. And secondly, I recalled needing a Water Dino for one of the underwater artifacts. The good news is, after some time, I managed to spot a high-level Baryonyx and decided to try to tame it. I searched for a suitable area to set up a taming pen and then cautiously kited the Baryonyx into the trap. Did we get it? Yep, we did. Come on, buddy. In you go. And stay, please. Stay. Thank you very much. After trapping the berry in the pen, I proceeded to trank and knock it out cold using my OP taming gear. However, to tame this creature, I needed to take a dive into the river since it required raw fish meat. And that's what I aimed to get. With a supply of fish meat in my inventory, I swam back to the knocked out Baryonyx, fed it the required food and patiently waited for it to tame up. Now that I had a male Baryonyx, I set out in search of a female to get its groove on and potentially hatch stronger offspring. Close to the Redwoods, I found a low-level Baryonyx, suitable for mating with the one I had. Determined, I scouted for a good location to set up my taming pen, making sure that the area was clear of all unwanted dinos. Once satisfied, I proceeded to place the taming pen. However, what I hadn't realized about this particular Baryonyx was its low level, making the use of a taming pen unnecessary. With a few well-placed shots from my crossbow and tracks, I was able to knock the bugger out. Afterwards, all that was left to do was to feed it some fish meat and wait for the tame to complete. Are you freak done with taming the Baryonyx? I decided to check out a few supply drops on my way back to base, securing some awesome and juicy loot in the process. Hey yo, looking good y'all, white drop with a ring on it, well, just get it, it's on our way home, see what, oof, nice, right, oh yes, I needed to set up a greenhouse, and for that, I had a few prerequisites. firstly, I had to replace the Styracosaurus that I just lost due to the darn crashes, that dino was excellent at collecting a bunch of stone, I just had to find and tame yet another one. Secondly, I needed a dino that could produce fertilizer, or in this case, the poop I required to maintain my crops. What better choice than the majestic four-legged, snorting, loving poop factory? Yeah, the Fiomia, of course. I had to tame one. I gotta sort this out. <laughs> oh, snap. What did I freaking do? At first, I need to knock this thing out. Come on. Go down, puppy. Go, go, freaking to sleep. Go. Hey, <laughs> that worked great. Although that was after dealing with a Bronto situation at the base. Nothing too crazy though. Let's go, buddy. We'll take that meat either way. It's bloody. There we go. There we go! Afterwards, I began working on the greenhouse, laying down the foundations to get an idea of what needed to be done. Lastly, I decided to work on some piping, trying to figure out how this new watering system works on Arc Ascended. I must say, it's really mind-boggling that water could mysteriously pass through invisible pipes and just land in water containers. Like, I understand mods, but this is supposed to be the real deal. I don't know, it just seems kinda strange. Continuing my efforts, I focused on constructing the greenhouse, placing a few crop plots for the veggies I wanted to grow and attaching greenhouse structures to see how beneficial they would be for my crops. Of course, I hoped to use the least amount of greenhouse structures as it would mean less farming for resources. Unfortunately, I needed more greenhouse structures and that meant leaving Herbivore Island to farm for more crystal. I had to deal with a few unwanted dinos and continue to gather as much crystals as I could carry. Also, hitting some of those beaver dams for cementing paste, because, as you may know, you can't craft glass structures without a significant amount of cementing paste. Back at base, I went straight to work to complete my greenhouse build. It seemed like I had to use a lot of glass structures to get the full greenhouse buff for my crops, but I guess it was all worth it in the end.
So, I've been putting off this task for a while now, as I didn't want to deal with all the crashes that come with breeding and hatching dinos. But I guess the time had come for me to tackle it. Yeah, for the next two days, I focused on breeding my berries. I also had to take care of those pesky brontos that kept falling into my base, almost messing up the greenhouse I had just built. Unfortunately, I didn't realize it at the time, but I did lose the Fiomia in the process. At least I got rid of the bronto though. Afterwards, I went ahead and tamed yet another Fiomia that was wandering in and around the base. Finishing things off with a couple of compost bins, then I went on to milk the Fiomia I just tamed for its poop to use in the compost bins. On day 30, it was time to tackle my first ever cave on Ark Ascended. I must admit, I was quite anxious entering the cave as I had no idea what to expect, especially in terms of the dinos present. However, after some time, it didn't turn out to be that bad. Yes, there were dinos along the way, but I managed to take them out with good old Barry. Next, I went on to tame a dung beetle that was stuck in a rock. I came prepared as these creatures required poop to tame quickly and I had a whole lot of poop thanks to the Fiomia. Then, rather cautiously and swiftly, I grabbed the artifact and hightailed it out of there. The second half of the cave was filled with tons of dinos and I probably would have gotten wrecked if I couldn't make a speedy getaway. Day 31. I spent this day loot hunting, farming up as much loot as I could as I needed to prep up for more of the island's caves and their artifacts. Ooh, a yellow drop with a ring on it. I did hear something crazy, so just hoping. Oh, please, let me grab this, please. Oh, that's what I want. Wait, 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 wait. Save this. Ain't losing this thing. Look at that. Brilliant. Okay, no yellow one, but I did find a purple one close by. This just dropped. Oh, Geely. Let me just go for this one, because it's, it's close by. So, uh, I might as well just have a little sneak peek of what it's got. Uh, I can't remember what these blue things are. Oh, here's the big one right here. Big Daddy, a red trap. Awesome. <laughs> this isn't that good. Uh, maybe we can get a couple more cryopods. Oh, there we go. I found uh, two more yellow drops. I can get this one. I hope. Next one is a bit further away. Oh, step son. That's what we want. Looks like we're gonna make it! We're gonna make it! Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. I need this. Oh, freak! Yes! Let's go! During my pursuit to upgrade my flyer to a mounted griffin, I spotted a red supply drop, and of course, I just had to check it out. It wasn't that bad. I got some cool loot from it as well. I also found something really cool, a baby rex accompanied by its papa. All I had to do to get an easy rex tame was to take out the daddy rex and imprint on the baby. It was that simple and I freaking bagged a decent level rex. Sweet! After searching for hours for a mountain griffin, I finally found one and decided to try to free tame it. Taming without a taming pin. Oh boy, was this just the beginning of all of my problems. Can get it from here. Nah. Can we get its tail? Maybe. Nope. Where are you going to, son? I'm trying to TB. Oh, snap. There it is. We might get wrecked there. <laughs> Let's try this strategy. Whoopa. Where you go? This is why you freaking use traps. <laughs> awesome. 
I'm gonna follow it into the sunset. Ah, oh, great stuff. No! Get out of the way. Yes! Let's go. We got it now. Oh, come on, come on, come on. Cams just don't know when to quit. Hey. Hey, yo. Oh, my goodness. That was great. Great stuff. I'm gonna try and get it some prime meat here. Let's tango, buddy. Ah, oh, darn it. Not wanting to give up on this griffin, I tried once again to tame it. And let's just say, it was a whole lot easier this time around. I knocked it out, got it some prime meat, and then waited for it to tame up. Day 33 was mainly a day I set aside for a few resource runs. I went on to farm some metal, cooked up a few more refining forges to smelt the metal faster, and decided to tempt fate by farming a whole bunch of crystals that were in close proximity to a freaking giga. So, I continued collecting more metal because I needed a whole lot more of this resource. My plan was to craft a grinder, a piece of machinery that would put the extra loot I had gathered to good use. Back at the base, I proceeded to farm some raw meat and also decided to raise the baby rex I had acquired earlier. Okie dokie, so I decided to take a little break from the farming I was doing and flew towards the snow biome. My goal was to start prepping for the boss fights and some of the caves, and my dino of choice at the moment was the Megatherium. Would you believe it? I freaking spotted a max level Megatherium. Not wanting to waste any time, I swiftly set out to find a good area to place the taming pen I had prepped for this tame. From there, I went ahead to kite the 150 Megatherium into the trap, and man, it was like stealing candy from a baby. That's how smoothly things went. Once the dino was in the taming pen, I hopped on the Rex and began the taming process, until I was able to knock it out cold, like a little baby furball. All I had to do after that was to get some prime meat for the furball, and basically wait for it to tame up. Finally, I was making progress with all the resources I was farming. There were just a few more items that I needed. And yep, metal was one of them. So, my friends, it was off for yet another metal run. On day 37, while waiting for the metal to smelt, I thought it would be best to do something rather than waste the spare time I had. Once again, I flew off towards the snow biome in search of more megatheriums to start breeding with the one I already had. After finding a few suitable mates for my megatherium, I looked for a spot to place down the trap. I summoned Booger T as a bodyguard because things were getting crazy in the area and I didn't want to get caught off guard. Knowing that I was in good hands, I focused on setting up the taming pen. As before, I lured the megatherium into the trap then tranked it until it was knocked out. However, I decided to take it down because I found a better Megatherium that I could tame. To be honest, the first Dino was the wrong one. I didn't mean to try to tame that one. I actually wanted to tame the second Furball that I lured into the taming pen. Here's the thing though, it was not the only Dino I tamed that day. Oh yeah, I managed to find another Megatherium and tamed that one too. Well, on my way back to base the previous day, I decided to fly past Kano Island to check things out. During the exploration, I came across a decent level mountain griffin flying around, and I thought, I just have to have it. I returned on day 38, prepped with a few structures for a taming pen, as there was no way I wanted to go through what happened the last time I tried to tame a griffin. I proceeded to place down the taming pen, and when I was satisfied with its placement, I focused my attention on the griffin. Using my RG, I tried to kite the creature into the taming pen, and before I knew it, I was able to trap the griffin. Afterwards, I began tracking it with my new and improved crossbow, made it go to sleep, and well, that was it. I bagged a juicy flyer peeps. Oh yeah, let's not forget the primate it needed to be tamed. Day 39 started off with me going after two red supply drops that gave me some freaking OP loot. I mean, that pump shotgun looked super amazing. 
Returning to base, I started breeding my megatheriums and griffins for the next two days. Unfortunately, while I was busy breeding my dinos, the game freaking crashed. Again! This time, it messed up my breeding process, meaning that I had to start all over again. To deal with the frustrations of crashing, I decided to go out and do a meat run with Booger T. Continuing with the Megatherium breeding, my goal was to pass the better stats of the 150 females onto a male, aiming for a breeding pair with the best stats. Fortunately, I successfully raised another female Megatherium that I could utilize and took it out to gain some levels by messing around with the local dinos. Oh yeah, and I almost forgot to mention that I took down a Mama Bronto and managed to nab one of its babies. I know it might sound mean, but they're free dinos and they were pretty OP too. Additionally, the dung beetle I had previously tamed was doing a great job. I hadn't realized it, but this little creature could pick up other dinos poop and convert it into fertilizer. Surprisingly, it had tons of freaking fertilizer in its inventory. With this in mind, I decided it was time to start planting some of the crops I needed and get them growing. Alrighty, well, I still needed just a few more bits and bobs to get the grinder. So, while the megatheriums were busy with their thing, I opted to go out and farm the last bits of crystals that I required from the volcano. Yep, still risking it for the biscuit as the giga was still in the area. Also hitting down those beaver dams again for their oh so juicy cementing paste before moving off towards the snow biome where I intended to gather as much oil as I could. I then attempted to go the easy way of obtaining polymer. However, there were hardly any penguins spawning in. Besides, I couldn't really harvest the organic polymer from them for some weird reason. Although, that red drop was super juicy. Anyways, I decided to go for plan B and gather as much obsidian as I required. Alrighty, so it's time for us to check out our next cave. Can't really fit there, but we have a solution for that. Come on, puppy. Go into your little body key. Let's do this. Hopefully, all goes well. Hiccups. Yep, we're all good here. But we'll just waste them, shall we? We got the bug buff. Definitely don't want to fall down there. Oh, nice. How you like me now, son? 2k on that bad boy and there's the artifact but we can't really see it awesome to grab this and get out of here is that simple Oh man, day 45 was the day I was finally able to craft the freaking grinder. And boy, did it work wonders. I mean, just look at the amount of resources that I managed to grind from the extra loot that I collected over time. Both the grinder and fabricator were full of resources and it was filled with all the good stuff too. So much so that I just needed a bit more of oil to get the industrial forge, which of course I couldn't wait for. So I sped off to the snow biome to grab the oil that I required and returned to base where I went ahead to craft the industrial forge. Before I could get really serious, I decided to start working on a better and bigger base. I really wanted to build some type of floating base, but first I had to tame a dino that would help me gather the wood I needed. The easiest dino I could find to tame for this task was, of course, the giant beaver. Once the beaver was tamed, I flew off to the location where I planned to build my floating base. The thing is, I was going to build it over water, so I had to be extra cautious and take out any creatures that would interfere with the build. Fortunately, Riptide was up to the task. After clearing the area of all the unwanted dinos, I proceeded to farm up the resources that I required to craft the structures needed for the build. By day 47, I had laid down the foundations, mapping out the layout of the base that I had in mind. I must be honest, this base that was in my mind was just a tad bit fuzzy. I was struggling to visualize the final build. 
On day 48, things were starting to take shape. I know it doesn't look like it, but trust me, in my mind, I could start seeing the bigger picture. And to me, it looked freaking awesome. Plus, I figured out I just had to place a few foundations at the bottom of the lagoon's floor and I'd be able to extend my base, which I did a whole lot more as well. The next two days were all about filling the final bits and bobs to somewhat complete the look of the base. I must say that the new structures looked so good. It didn't matter what you built, it just turned out really amazing. After looking at what I've managed to build, I gotta say that I once again was impressed by what I managed to create. This was a build that I just went with the flow and hoped everything would turn out well. To me, it certainly did, and more. Of course, I wasn't done with the entire build just yet. I had to farm a few more things to get up some glass structures, but I wasn't in the mood for that at the moment. It would definitely have to wait till I'm in the mood for that kind of stuff. It was moving day and I had to transfer everything I needed from the old base to the new one. Fortunately, my RG had the weight capacity to carry most of the items, so I stashed everything in its inventory. As for my dinos, that's where the grinder came in handy. I ground up a few items and used the resources to craft a couple of cryopods. With those, I transported the dinos I needed to the new base. From there, it was time to bid farewell to this amazing spot on Herbivore Island and get ready for our long journey back to a better future. Alright, let's check out our new, the next cave. So, we're gonna put a couple of uh, scuba armor on. Give it a shot. And our next artifact. It looks pretty amazing. I just hope I'll survive. Oh my freaking soul. No, no, no. I am freaking taking... I need to get out of here. I am taking... Oh crap. Let's get out of here before we die. So, it turns out I needed two pieces of uh, Keely. Good boy! Yeah, it seems like... We are going the right way. There's a red freaking trap there, son. We already have swamp fever, so I, I need to figure out what we need to to get this uh, swamp fever out. Leech blood, maybe? I can't remember. But we'll take everything we got. Is oh, freak! Get out of here. One more Wish me luck, Macy. Titanosaurs take issue with creatures invading its personal. There we go. This is probably because they aggressively feed off any and all plants they can find. Let's get our butts out of here. Constantly, which certainly helps recover health. So, I needed to craft the lesser antidote to get rid of my swarm fever. The issue was that narcotics were required, and with all that was going on, coupled with crashes, I probably forgot to grab the narcotics from the old base. I had to fly over to the Herb Island base to grab the narcotics needed to craft the cure for my swarm fever. While I was at the old base, I decided to strip down the greenhouse structures so I could use them in the new greenhouse build. Back at the new base, I proceeded to work on building a new greenhouse for my crops, all the while ensuring it blended in with my base and looked aesthetically pleasing. On day 54, I continued working on the greenhouse build, tackling the two remaining sides. Of course, I found myself low on resources. With my RG, we flew to the volcano once again to gather some crystals, then headed back to the base to finish up the job. The greenhouse was complete, equipped with magic piping and crop plots to get me going. Day 55, I decided to take my new griffin out for some supply drop hunting. Not only did these drops provide me with good loot, but they yielded high tier items items that I could grind in the grinder for a whole bunch of juicy resources. Needless to say, I was pretty excited about these trips. What was truly mesmerizing was finding an Ascendant Giga Saddle in a purple drop. A freaking purple drop, peeps? I don't even know if that was a thing or not. Before I could start breeding an army of boss fighting dinos, I needed a space large and secure enough for the breeding process. Despite my base looking good as it is, I didn't think an extension to it would be the right move. So, I decided to build on land in the front of the base. 
Initially, I considered using fence foundations because I kind of like that style of build. However, it quickly became apparent that this wasn't going to work. That's when I scrapped that idea and opted for dino gates instead. I then created a really cool area for my dinos to get their groove on and help me produce those boss fighting babies. While I was in the creative zone, I decided to channel those creative juices into my base and give it an awesome fence design. Though, I must say, it was quite a pain in the butt to get that snap point I was looking for. While out and about with my griffin, I freaking spotted a level 135 rex and I thought, yeah, I could use this for something. There was a lot of activity in that area that needed to be dealt with. That's when I summoned in the mighty Macy and completely annihilated everything in the area, except for the Rex. Once the area was free from all the unwanted dinos, I swapped Macy Gray for a crossbow. From the back of my griffin, I began to trank the colossal Rex. Within the space of a couple of trank arrows, I was able to knock out the old guy, fed it the prime meat that I had collected, and pretty much bagged a freaking OP boss killing machine. Later that day, and for the next few days, I focused on breeding my megatheriums for the first boss fight. Also, grabbing some grub for the babies, as they eat a freaking ton as they mature. The good thing with Megatheriums is that they eat berries as well, so that was really easy to farm. With the food prepped for my Megatheriums, it was all about looking after the babies, and making sure that they grow strong, healthy, and ready to take on some screebs. Oh yeah, I also did manage to get a beauty, a really cool bright red Megatherium. Pretty neat! Oh boy, now that I had a Rex, I decided to search for a mate to start breeding some killer Rexes. Over at Kano Island, I found a freaking high-leveled female Rex, and you know, I just had to have it. Fortunately, I had a griffin, and it made taming dinos really easy. I just sat on the back of my griffin, whipped out my OP taming gear, and proceeded to trank the Rex. After shooting it with a few trank arrows, I managed to get it to sleep. I was on Kano Island, so getting prime meat for it to tame up wasn't a problem either. On day 62, I hooked my base up with some electricity. I know it took me a mighty long time to do this, but somehow it just slipped my mind. Today was the day I cooked up some generators. One of them was for the base, that came with a refrigerator, and a couple of lights to brighten up the base. The other bits and bobs were for the breeding area, so that I could hatch those dino eggs and actually see what I was doing during the night. It was time to check out the Skylord cave, and this one proved to be a bit tricky due to a couple of new additions that completely disorientated me. I must admit, I don't do well in tight spaces. That's why I had Riptide with me. I did my best to kite the cave dwellers towards me, and Riptide did the rest whenever possible. Still, I faced some trouble finding the way to the artifact. After spending a decent amount of time in the cave, I eventually stumbled upon a path that looked somewhat familiar. It led me to where the artifact stood, but not without having to deal with a few nasties first. Finally, I grabbed the artifact of the Skylord and made a swift getaway. Day 64 was dedicated to preparing for future tasks. I flew over to the volcano and gathered as much metal as possible. Back at base, I proceeded to gather wood to convert that into charcoal in preparation for making gunpowder. On day 65, I embarked on another loot hunting spree with my griffin, aiming to collect as much valuable loot as possible. I managed to score some juicy items from the supply drops, and then some not desirable ones. While I was out and about, I decided to look for an otter. They would come in handy when I had to cave dive in some of the caves with the harshest temperatures. Fortunately, I located one and attempted to tame it. To tame one of these creatures, you would have to take down a fish and then feed it to the otter. Luckily, this otter only required two fish to join my tribe. 
for the next few days, I took out my army of Megatheriums to level them up, utilizing some Explorer nodes for their experience buff and chomping down on nearby dinos, even bagging a baby Ceratosaurus in the process. I continued the leveling spree by jumping on more dinos, tackling some spinos, messing around with the rex just for the fun of it, and taking care of a herd of brontos just because I needed those levels. Not forgetting to take down those alpha dinos, they were perfect for gaining a ton of levels within the shortest amount of time, so I had to get them. Ready, so it's time to do our next cave. Um, I think it's the clever cave, if I'm not mistaken. We need this for the brood mother. Um, I'm wondering if I can fit through the whole cave. It looks a bit different. Of course, scams. Of course, it will. All of you guys get wrecked. Here, are these culprits that will take your armor out. What the freak is happening here? Holy smokes! We get a quick bite. Yep, you go crazy there, boy. Um, just in case something jumps us. I'm gonna put that on. And we got the artifacts of the paper. That's what we needed. Okay, let's get out of here. Alrighty, peeps. It's time to try our luck with our first boss. I'm pretty sure we'll be able to make it. I guess uh, it's best we give it a shot. Hey, okay. we're gonna be hopping on Macy Gray, and the rest of our Megatheriums will be doing the work. I'll be chilling at the back. Alrighty, are you guys ready? Oh snap! I'm super hot. Yo. Go and attack him or her. There we go. Now we got it. Now we do with some damage. You got to end this fast though, cause uh Darn it man, cause I'm uh, getting super hot. No. Okay, I'm cool. Do you do it okay? Nothing we need to do. <laughs> I'm not sure. If my uh, Megatheriums will do well against the other bosses. Here we go. Almost done. Good mother. Chaos, son. Chaos. Take that, you freak of nature, you. Before committing to start breeding my Rexes and being rooted to the base for however long that took, I decided to venture out to the snow biome to find a UT that I could tame. After searching the shores of the snow biome, I found a decent level UT that would be suitable. While on my griffin, I proceeded to drank the giant feathered beast, being careful not to get too close as it would have sent my griffin flying out of control and eventually knocked it out. I gathered some prime meat from the canos that accompanied it, fed it to the UT, and waited for it to tame. On my way back to base, I went ahead and tamed a Lystro and its baby to help my dinos gain a few more experience points while they chilled at the base. Alrighty, it was time to tackle the breeding of my Rexes. So, for the next few days, I spent my time doing what needed to be done to get a good pair of Rexes for a boss fighting breeding line. But here's the thing, while busy trying to get what I needed, I was so focused on what I was doing that I forgot to save my progress. And what happens? The game freaking crashes, setting back the progress I had made. This meant that I would have to do all of this for a second time. However, I pushed through and managed to get the Rexes with the stats I wanted and hatched a few eggs that I thought I would use. 
On day 78, I ventured to the snow biome yet again, this time in search of another Utyrannus to mate with the one I already had. Close to the entrance of this strong artifact cave, I found a UT that would make the cut. I wasted no time and proceeded to drag the UT from my griffin. However, as I was about to send in the finishing shot, I got caught in one of the UT's roars, sending my griffin flying like a headless chicken to no man's land. The good thing about this situation is that I did manage to put the UT to sleep just as it sends me flying. Then I summoned Booger T to take care of the Carnos. Unfortunately, some were stuck underwater, which I was able to destroy with my crossbow and harvesting the prime meat from their bodies. I then fed the prime meat to the UT and stayed by its side until I bagged the tame. Day 79, I dedicated my time to farming supply drops. The purpose behind these farming sprees wasn't just for the fun of it. I was actually on the lookout for saddle blueprints for my boss fighting dinos. Unfortunately, there were no saddle blueprints that I needed. However, I did manage to get a whole bunch of other awesome loot that I could use, especially the ones that I could grind for more resources. With the extra loot I had previously collected, I decided to grind them and use the resources to craft a few crafting stations that would help me prepare things more efficiently. Needing a few more resources, I zipped out to grab them, gathered flint and stone to craft spark powder, then flew over to the snow biome to collect the oil I required. Afterwards, I crafted an industrial cooker and then the chemistry bench. Day 81, I focused on preparing for the final boss fight by farming on a much larger scale, gathering an abundance of resources. Once I had rounded up the collected items, I proceeded to craft gunpowder for the ammo required for my overpowered pump shotty. I also cooked up some medical brews to replenish my health when needed. Although, the frustrating part was that I could only craft 10 med brews at a time. Leaving it on order craft would result in unwanted paint. Alright, so it's time to get uh, another freaking uh, artifact. What the freak was that? That's crazy. Um, yeah, this is the way I hope. Oh, look at that. Here's the creatures. See how far we could go without uh, dying? Never mind, not too far, I guess. Okay, so let's go down this way. Let's see if uh, we find our way. It's freaking crazy, man. I should have uh, did that option where you don't pick up stuff, hey. There we go. Here we go. We got the buff. We're ready to rumble. Ah, oh, there we go. Something that looks familiar. I think we're good here. I think I know where it is now. Sweet! Where I need to go is... Somewhere... Up there? Somewhere up there. There we go. In here... It's where we need to go. Come on. Ooh. Ooh. Hope there's nothing crazy here. Grab that. Beautiful. Okay. So whilst I'm at it, we're just going to go for the next one. Because uh, we don't have a lot of time. Can only hear the things creepy coolly. All you have to do is get down to the very bottom. Jeez, there's a lot of dinos there. Loads of bats. Okay, looks like we're going the fast way. Okay, there 
A little heavy. It is smaller right, than whatever. A human, we grab this thing. The same speed. Artifact acquired. Sweet. Relative, right, let's do this quickly. Remember, this is not being so good for me the last time. Gotta be really careful. Loads of crazy things here. Alright, so I think I assume some are here. It's there. Where is the freaking entrance? Not here. Alright, we found it. Let's see if we can uh, do this. Gotta be careful. Gotta be careful. Yeah. Oh boy. Should I stick to the walls or... Oh. At least there's a spot for us to chill here. Yeah. Probably am going around in circles. I need to find myself. Ah, freak! That screwed me. Come on. You go. You go. They don't shock you off your mount. Alright. I'm wanting to do this again. Let's get out of here, man. For the next underwater cave, rumored to be exceptionally challenging, I decided not to take any chances and opted to tame a basilo. As recommended by many, I thought I'd grab some easy primates from a baby Styracosaurus I had spotted and begin my search for a suitable basilo. Not long after, I found a low-level basilo. However, knowing that I would face high-level dinos in the cave, I realized this one wouldn't make the cut, so I continued my search for a higher-leveled basilo. A few miles away from the earlier basilo, I found a potentially suitable dino. To start taming it, I had to first take care of the dinos around it as they would attack me after feeding the basilo. Once the coast was clear, I swam up to the basilo and began the taming process by feeding it the prime meat I had. Here's the thing I didn't know about, these dinos took forever between feeding times. It felt like an eternity, so much so that I thought it might be bugged. Frustrated, I decided to abandon this tame and try the lower level basilo to see if it was also bugged. Unfortunately, the same thing happened with this one as well. However, just as I was about to give up, I decided to check on the level 90 basilo, just in case. To my surprise, it was ready for its next feed, and the next one, and yeah, you guessed it, the next one as well, until I finally managed to tame the darn thing. Now that I had sorted my underwater cave problems, I needed some time for the basilo to gain a few passive experience points while in the cryopod. To make the most of the remaining time, I proceeded to breed more of my rexes to complete the second half of my army. At the same time, I started breeding my UTs. However, I managed to obtain a few mutations with my Rexes, mainly in their HP. Therefore, deciding not to use the first batch of Rexes that I had raised and opted for the new and improved babies. By day 88, everything was in order and my Rex army was almost ready to rock and roll. Alrighty, so... Let's move on to our next artifact. I believe it's the cutting. And here they come. Never mind, Cams. Just keep swimming. Just keep swimming. The guy's not gonna catch me now. Ooh, Moza. Freak. Yo, hitting me for a huntress and I got an ascended saddle? I should have leveled up this guy a little bit more. Okay, looks like I have to stay here and fight. We could do this. Holy smokes. This is not good. Not good at all, but uh We have an ascended settle, so Yeesh. Can we get out of here? 
Yes, we can. Oh, smokes. Holy smokes. I think I went the wrong way. But I don't care. Because I need to get away from these guys. Where did I go? Oh, down under. Down under. Oh, smokes. Holy smokes. This is not a good cave. Oh my goodness. Let's stay here and fight. Let's see. Can we do it? We should be able to do it. Come on. You can do it, buddy. You can do it. Do it, full daddy. Come on. You got this. You got this. Come on. We did it. Oh, we did it. Oh, grab. Let's get out of here. So, with that madness out of the way, I spent the next few days leveling my Rexes by taking down just about anything we could find, from normal dinos to rare alpha dinos, and so much more, all to boost up their stats. I also utilized explorer notes I had left behind to provide an extra push, gaining even more levels by taking down the wild creatures of Ark Ascended. And not forgetting to level my Utaranus as well. It certainly required the levels, as it served as one of my main supporting dinos, and it needed to be as strong as possible. Alrighty, it was off to the hard snow cave to try and obtain the artifact of the strong. To be totally honest, I was pretty anxious about it, knowing that there would be a lot of tough dinos to get through. Fortunately for me, I had some good Rexes on hand and double teamed the cave dinos with that mate boosted buff. We just totally destroyed anything and everything that got in the way. Although getting the other Rex to follow was a bit of a challenge and made me a little scared for what lies ahead in the tech cave. Anyways, we put up quite a fight, making it through hordes and hordes of these cave dinos. To my surprise, things were going along pretty smoothly. Even when things got a little hectic, we stood our ground and chomped our way through the massive waves of dinos thrown at us. Finally, we made our way towards the prize, the last artifact that I needed to get, the artifact of the strong. Days 94 and 95 were spent taking on the next two world bosses, the Megapithecus and the Dragon. For these fights, I chose to use the Megatheriums as one half of my army and the Rexes as the other half. Of course, I had my trusty support dino, the UT, to help strengthen the attacks of my team. The Megapithecus boss was quite an easy fight and we didn't experience any hiccups there. As for the Dragon boss, now that was a bit of a challenge. The terrain didn't help the cause at all and it was a bit difficult difficult to attack the dragon while it was flying. Unfortunately, I somehow lost one of my Rexes to the dragon. However, in the end, I did manage to take down both bosses and bagged both their trophies. I was getting desperate, trying to find any sort of saddle blueprints for either my Rexes or the Megatheriums. For the last two spare days I had, I decided to go for one last supply drop run, checking as many drops as possible in the hopes of finding the elusive saddle blueprints. I also checked some of the easier cave loot crates to see if they would help, but in the end, I was out of luck and out of time. It looks like I would have to go in with primitive saddles. Day 98. Last minute preps were on the go. I needed to work on getting more medical brews. While that was cooking in the background, I went ahead to craft as much shotgun ammo as I could possibly get, and everything else in between. Was almost time, peeps, to take on the final boss. But first, I had to set up my dino in such a way that they would be able to enter the tiny door leading into the tech cave. Jeez, you know, these devs need to rethink this one though. Anyways, what I needed to do was place a dino in front and then whistle the dino behind it to follow, continuing the process until the very last dino. This was a crazy task to tackle because the following distance between dinos were all messed up and kinda difficult to get right. 
After some time, I eventually got my dinos ready to enter the cave, but for now, I just needed to rest and prepare myself mentally for the chaos that I was about to experience. Oh boy, talk about chaos peeps. This was by far the most mentally challenging thing I've ever done. The crashes I could deal with, but this drove me nuts. Firstly, trying to carefully lead my dinos into the cave. Freak! That was like trying to thread a needle. My rexes were all over the place, doing their own thing. I had to try my best to get them in. Luckily, I did manage to get all of my rexes in. As for my Megatherium team, well, that was an epic fail. They sort of just tangled themselves up, making it quite impossible to get them in a line. Also, time was running out for the doors to close, and I managed to only take in two of my Megatheriums. Oh my freaking gosh! And then, it was about that time to lead my dinos through the tech cave itself. Now this, peeps. This is what drove me insane. I don't know what the freak was going on, but my dinos were just going mental. Doing a whole lot of strange things, like walking around in circles, leaving the pack for no reason, and getting stuck on every single freaking thing. I had to keep readjusting the train and making sure that these dinos were in order. Yep, there were of course some losses along the way. Unfortunately, these darn dinos had a mind of their own and just felt like maybe taking a dive in lava to cool off or something. I don't know any other reason for them to want to jump in, but hey, that's their thing. Then there were tons and tons of tricky bends and turns. It was just complete madness, I tell you. This time, I had no idea what to do because these dinos were so fun calm. Literally, at this point, I was like, whatever. I just wanted to get to the terminal and really didn't care how many dinos made it or not. I just wanted out. After this horrendous experience in the tech cave, I finally made it to the terminal with six Rexes, the two big Ethereums, the u Tyrannus, and little Bob the Otter. Yeah, eight fighting dinos. Things weren't looking so good for us. Alright, well we made it. Let's see if we could uh, defeat this thing. Ah, I can't believe how freaking crazy it is for these dinos to follow obviously something's not right to them almost ready to get down to the business side of things let's go peeps look at where this nutcase is going ready guys <laughs> this is it this is the showdown let's go Come on, please! Let's do this! That's the guy you need to shoot. Or we'll take down. Alright. You guys do your thing. I don't know how this is gonna go, but... <laughs> I hope everything goes well. I was gonna try and help you guys here. There you go. Whilst those guys are taking care of business, keep your eye on that fella. That's all I'm saying. Where'd you go? Wait, 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 wait. Come on, everybody, follow the McNuggets. Okay, McNuggets, you follow me, right? Let's go. Come on. Alright, alright. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Everybody follow. You have to take care of this uh come on. Come on everybody! We got a dragon to, to take care of. Woo -wee. Take him on, son! You got this. You got this. I have faith in you. Alright. Nice. We're hardly taking damage. Um, how's our armor doing? Oh, doing fine. Are you okay, Bruce? Just, just, just start breaking things, yeah? Yeah, you missed me, son. Come on, here's a buff for ya. Have that. Have some super juice, why don't you? 
Are my Megas still around? I don't see them. Oof. Some of my Rixes are really bloody. Yeah! My Megas are still around. Beautiful! Yeah, we can tank. We can tank. No problem about that. Come on. This guy. Attack this guy. Come on. Dude. Uh, three. Okay. You got me, Sunny. Ooh. Defense units killed. What? We got your back, man. Where'd he go? Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Hurry up, hurry up, hurry up. Get that dude right there. Come on. Dudes! Follow. Here, 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 here. This one. This one. This one. Take him on, son. Here's some super juice for you guys. I don't know how long we can take damage. But I do. I do know there's a fine. But we good. Oh, there we go. The three. Oh, we did it. Good job, guys. Good job. I love you guys. I love you to infinity and beyond. You guys. Okay, saved me. How did we do this? One, two, three, four, five. Five rixes? Thank you, guys. You're beautiful. Let's get out of here. Come on. Oh. A little moment of silence for our buddy old pal, yeah. You guys did amazing. Amazing. I love you. Let's go, peeps. We did it. This is freaking amazing. Six Rexes, two Megatheriums. It was a tough one. Really, truly, it was.